Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now something that I think is somewhat of a secret weapon when it comes in the battle against bike grime, grime, not crime, is these things. This, this curious looking thing, this is a bike dryer and if you stick around and stay tuned for the next few minutes, I'll tell you all about them. So over the months, lots of people have asked me, how do I go about keeping my bikes looking all spangly and clean? Well, I made a video about how I go about cleaning my bikes uh, some months back, probably, probably about a year ago now. I'll stick a link below to that one in case you haven't seen it. That shows you the sort of overall process I use. But I think uh, one of the most important things that when you're cleaning the bike uh, is to make sure you get the thing dried properly. Not only do you end up with a nice shiny bike that doesn't have streaks and watermarks on it if you dry it carefully, but also it helps you inhibit corrosion. And this is exactly where one of these things comes in the old bike dryer, well, or in this case, a fairly new bike dryer. So yeah, so these bike dryers, not only uh, do they get all the excess water off, but they get right in the nooks and crannies as well and make sure that you've got absolutely no moisture left on the bike. And if you've got no moisture on the bike, that means that corrosion can't form. And to me, a corrosion-free bike is a nice bike. Okay, so if you've not come across one of these uh, bike dryers before, what you can think of it as is kind of, if you like, a, you think of it as kind of a very powerful hairdryer or sort of a vacuum cleaner in reverse that also has an element built in and blows out hot air. So basically, it's a very powerful uh, hot air blower. It's got a built-in heater. So uh, not only does, you know, it, does it get in and disperse moisture, but it also helps evaporate it with the heat as well. Um, so there are other things that you can use. Some people talk about using things like airlines. You can certainly use an airline to help dry your bike out internally. That's a perfectly good way of doing it. Some people I know use leaf blowers. That's another good way of doing it. Um, but of course, if you use a leaf blower or an airline, they don't have the heating bit, and that's what really does help get the moisture out. So I think purpose-built bike dryer is probably the way to go. Uh, a slightly cheaper way to go, something that's very similar, are pet dryers. And I know that a lot of people have had success with pet dryers as well. The key is, of course, knowing what you're getting and uh, making sure that the spec is such that you've got a nice, powerful machine. So we'll come a little bit closer, and I'll just talk you through some of the features and functions on this particular one, and uh, just point out how the thing works. So I guess the thing to look out for when you're specking up uh, one of these is what its power output is. Now this particular one is called a Turbo Blaster 1000, but uh, oddly, it actually puts out 2.8 kilowatts or 2,800 watts. So, and I would say that's probably the minimum you want for a really good blast of air. So nice and powerful, 2,800 watts is a, is a good number. Uh, comes of course with a flexible hose that really does extend a long way so you can get around your bike nicely. And also comes with a few accessories, some narrow nozzles and so on, so you can really get in various nooks and crannies. I just find that one works for pretty much everything, to be honest. And then and on the um, device itself, you've got a couple of switches here. Um, one is for on and off, one is to turn the heating element on and off, just in case you don't want uh, heat on for some reason. And then this uh, potentiometer here basically turns the heat up and down. I always have it on full tilt, and it puts out quite a lot of heat. This one goes up to uh, up to 60 degrees centigrade, so really does get quite warm. So uh, yeah, so that's basically all there is to it. It's a really rugged, solid, well-made bit of kit, and hence they are quite expensive. One like this will cost you about 120 pounds. Uh, and as I say, there are cheaper options available in the guise of pet dryers. Uh, and I found one that looks pretty similar to this, um, and that costs about half the price, about 60 pounds. So I've stuck some links below to this one and to the pet dryer as well, if you think that might be um, of more use to you. Now, the beauty of this is they get right in the nooks and crannies uh, when you actually use the thing, as I say. And uh, some bikes that have some really awkward bits and pieces about them around windscreens, around instrument clusters, these things just get right in there and dissipate all that moisture. What you do have to do, though, before you use them, is make sure you've got some ear protection in, because these things are really, really loud in operation. Uh, I just use a pair of normal foam earplugs, or sometimes even the um, custom fit guards that I, that I use when I, when I actually ride the bike, just because otherwise, as you're going in and about the bike, you really do get some horrible whistles and high, sh shrill noises, and you'll, you'll really do your hearing in if you don't do that. So do protect your hearing before you use it. So as you get to use your bike dryer on your various bikes, you'll get to know which of the bits of the bike that are, uh, you know, maintain water. Now on the BMW, for example, bad areas around the back here, for some reason around where you put the uh, top box of the panniers on, that really retains an awful lot of water. Uh, and then the other place is the radiators. On the GS, there's two radiators at the front and they hold a load of water. So what you want to do is make sure you, you dry those bits off first. Because if you don't do that, uh, you'll dry the rest of the bike, you'll get to those messy bits and then you'll re-wet your bike again. So do the awkward bits that you learn about first. And just while I mention radiators, it's worth saying that if you're going to dry your radiators, and I recommend you do, then make sure you blast them from the back to the front. That way you're blowing any debris out of the radiator rather than deeper into it and making sure that you, you know, make sure you don't damage the radiator. So yeah, that's something worth doing. But it's, um, once you've done that, once you've done the difficult, awkward bits, and I say the different for every bike, adventure bikes in particular are horrible to clean. Um, once you've done the nasty bits, then basically I work from the top uh, to the bottom for obvious reasons, because then you're blowing anything down onto the bike and you'll reach it as you get to the bottom. 
Uh, certainly start with the screen because that's the bit where it's obvious uh, when you get sort of water spats and so on. So get that nice and clean first and then the rest of it, uh, you know, as you go. And uh, I think you'll find that, that that, together with the use of things like ACF50, which I've talked about a lot in the past, is the way to keep your bike corrosion free. So there we have it. That's pretty much everything I've got to say about this little puppy, the bike dryer. Uh, before I go, it's just worth mentioning that uh, although I've uh, sort of extolled the virtues of this, the turbo blaster, and I'll, as I say, I'll stick links below to it, make a great little Christmas present for somebody maybe. Uh, this is one I've bought myself. I don't have any links to the company. They haven't asked me to advertise it or anything like that. I'd bought it with my own money. I didn't give them to me for free. Uh, I just think it's a great product and uh, I recommend it to you. So there we have it. Okay, I hope that's been of uh, some interest to you. If this is the first time that you've seen one of my videos, thank you very much for sticking to the end. Uh, great to have you along. Uh, it'd be great if you want to hit the subscribe button because that way uh, you can make sure you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I don't just do uh, product reviews, but also test ride lots of motorcycles. I do bits and pieces here in the garage in terms of maintenance and, uh, and care of the bike and also do trips and tours and things like that. Basically anything and everything to do with motorbikes. I cover it here. It'd be great to have you along. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already. All right, that's it for now. Hope that was of uh, some interest and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Till then, this has been Missing and Fly. Cheerio.